Hey, Matt. Hey, Ross. How are How's you? It going? I'm good. I'm good. And I think uh, we, we do formal introductions now. Oh, we do formal introductions. Yeah, it's been so yeah, long. I'm, um, so exactly. I'm, I'm no. Ross Douthat. I'm an op-ed columnist for the New York Times, and this is my return to blogging heads, um, which I didn't do while I wasn't blogging, because it seemed like... You know, you can't you can't do blogging heads if you aren't blogging, and that's not really true. But that was the theory that I had. <laughs> so, um, and, and but now I'm back, and you are. I am Matthew Iglesias with the uh, Center for American Progress, um, and uh, I've been blogging heads in consistently since basically the dawn of time. Actually, uh, you were the first person you introduced me to blogging heads. Um, exactly, you were the purveyor of the gateway drug that you know. That is yes, fake web television. I think we were. Ta- I think in our first blogging heads we talked about. What the what the J.J. Abrams Star Trek reboot would be like, and that was like two years before it actually came out. So exactly. So we were yeah. we were we were ahead of the curve. way ahead of the curve. Yeah, um, way way ahead. But speaking of ahead of the curve, I guess we should we should start off by talking about um, saving the Earth from impending cataclysm, which is the subject of um, various talks and consultations this week in Copenhagen, right? Yes. Well, not just this week. This is a, it's right, it's a, a terrifyingly two long it a, conference. Right. It's it's the seventh to the eighteenth. Something like that. It's like the longest conference I've ever heard of. I don't know. People like Obviously, people like Scandinavia, as you discovered on your trip this year. People they go there and they just wanna they wanna stay. I do like Scandinavia, but but I will say last last December I was in Scan well I was in Finland. Which is near Scandinavia, right? I know, and the Finns and don't. It's, um, and and Denmark. Wait, is Denmark technically part of Scandinavia too? Denmark is. Denmark yes. is. Finland isn't. Right, but at any rate, right. they're they're all Nordic. And and what I was going to say is that just December in Helsinki, at least, it was really really dark all the time. Um, not not the best vacation spot. I I was in Copenhagen um, back in October, and it, it was pretty nice, but still fairly dark. I, I think by now, you know, two weeks subjected to that kind of, um, you know, six hours of daylight regime uh, may kind of get the international negotiators pretty pretty depressed. <laughs> well, and you're also, I saw you, you, I think you posted that you were a little worried about, you know, they're, they're in Scandinavia where it's really, really cold. And so you're yeah, looking I forward mean, to headlines saying... Well, I mean, of course, we fear a snowstorm. Um, I, I mean, right. you know, there, there was some, I mean, last winter... I, Someone scheduled some big, you know, like youth climate event or, or something in, in Washington, D.C. And, you know, of course, it snowed. Um, so then, of course, there were posters of these people who were saying global warming is bad and, and they were surrounded by snow. Um, right. I think, of course, you know, if you if you understand the issue correctly, yeah, the point is not that there will never be cold weather anywhere in the future. Um, but still, it's bad. And <clears throat> If you actually look at look at surveys, um, the, the research appears to indicate that you know people's level of concern about climate change goes up in the summer and goes down in the winter. Right. Um, which again is not you know strictly relevant, but you know it it, it gets people thinking uh, one way or another. Um, you know, I think ideally you would have these climate summits on like small tropical Pacific islands. So, you know, people could say like, well, here we are, it's nice now, but if we were underwater, that would suck. Right. Rather than, you know, Denmark. Or they could just host them water. all in New Orleans. Yes, New Orleans, uh, solid. I think they're I mean, actually don't going you, to... Don't you think that actually Hurricane... I think if you look at, at least in terms of domestic public opinion, it seems like yes. Hurricane Katrina had the strongest sort of galvanizing effect on public belief in global warming. Right. I mean, I mean, which is interesting because it's not... I mean, what, what Hurricane Katrina is relevant to is just the, the reminder that sort of climate has strong impact on human well-being. Right. Uh, you know, which, of course, you know, people's people's um, people's sort of beliefs in, in the underlying science tend to track sort of underlying political commitments so that when the economy goes bad and people decide maybe they don't care as much about environmental issues... They, they don't just want to say, like, well, I'm greedy and selfish. They want to decide, not only do I care less about this because I'm worried more about my mortgage, but also, you know, oh, the science is all wrong right. and this isn't even happening. Um, so, yeah, I mean... Right, I mean, it, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily help when the biggest economic downturn in the last 50 years or so happens to coincide with a decade in which, let's say, temperatures have not been increasing as rapidly as they were. To well, the extent the, the, they have been increasing, right? 
I will say to the, the, the World Meteorological Union, something, World Meteorological, and then there's another word, came out with a report on this. And, it, I mean, what happened is that 1998, I think, remains the, the hottest year on record. Um, so in that sense, you know, there has not been uh, the, the further temperature increases. But the, but the average temperature... Right, the average the temperature is still higher than the average temperature in the It's still higher than the 90s, which was... Right, but, well, I mean, but what but, you're but, getting when you, when, you, when you graph it, right, is what looks like a, you know, a kind of plateauing across the last 10 years at a point that's higher than where temperatures were in the 80s. But in terms of the experience, it's not inaccurate to say that the experience of the last 10 years, as opposed to the experience of the 80s and 90s, has been of less appreciable warming, right? Um, I think that's right. I, I, right. I, well, I, I, would, yeah. I, would, I would have to look back at it. Um, but, but, I mean, yes. And, and of course, um, right. I mean, obviously, the, the best sort of newspaper headline you would have would be to say, 2009 is the hottest year on record, uh, you know, which it wasn't. Um, instead, 1998 keeps being. The, the, the hottest year on record. Right. Um, whereas the, the easiest way to dramatize this is to say, you know, talk about new new records that are that are being broken. Um, but that's not that's not what's going on. I, instead, there's I don't know records that have to do with ice. Um, not the kind of thing people people right. You right. know, there's still not, right. There's continuing. Yeah. There's con- continuing continuing ice problems. You could say. And, I mean, a lot a lot of stuff happens. Um, right. Well, let's let me let me ask you a couple things then. I mean, f- first of all, what's what's your sense of the sort of state of play going into going into Copenhagen, right? Because for a while, I mean, I, I think in terms of sort of the domestic political debates of the United States, there's definitely a sense right. that the push for um, sort of carbon emission limits is kind of back on its heels at the moment because of right. because of the recession, um, because of the, you know, leaked climate emails. I don't know, you know, I think it's hard to say to what extent that's filtered down into the, to the general public, but certainly that's there. Um, and maybe because of trends, sort of climate trends the last 10 years. And then when Obama went on his, his trip to Asia, um, mm-hmm. there was a lot of coverage saying, oh, this trip is unsuccessful because he's not getting... You know, he, he's not getting to where he needs to be with the Chinese and the Indians in terms of um, cutting deals with them, uh, you know, where we restrain our emissions, right. they restrain their emissions, and so on. But right. now it seems like in the last week or so there have been people saying, no, that's not true, a lot of progress was made um, on that trip and in general, and that, um, you know, and that the Obama administration at least is hopeful of coming out of Copenhagen with something more impressive. And I'm wondering what you think that something more impressive would look like. Yeah, I mean, well, so there were big steps forward with India to an extent, and, and particularly to, to China. So, you know, there's a, a realistic chance of, a, of an agreement sort of in, in broad terms in which um, countries set goals, uh, as they did at Kyoto, um, but that would include the United States right. and would also include China and India, um, which would be the the sort of thing you know that would be a, a global agreement that that gets you where you need to go i think the extent of the commitments is not going to be um right where the ipcc wants them to be uh, of course the the domestic political context um in the united states y- you know is sort of a, a different thing um you know and, and one factor I, I would point to there in addition to what you said is just the the changing attitude of john mccain 